Welcome students to this course. This is the first lecture of the first section of the course and it's under the title of microscopy. Microscopy refers to the microscope. So here in this lecture we are going to learn what are the types of the microscopes and what are the advantages and disadvantages of each type. So we, we know that in biology, in biological research and biological studies, we have two types of microscopes. The light microscope here on the left side of this slide here and the electron microscope and as you can see the electron microscope is much more developed than the light microscope. The light microscope is the classic microscope. It's used by uh, school students and college students. Uh, usually uh, it's, it have many limitations than the uh, electron microscope. The electron microscope it has a very high ability and it's only found in uh, high, highly developed labs, highly developed universities, and so on. And of course, it's much more expensive. Now, this is what you are going to see when you look under both microscopes. This is the picture here of a cell, it's a plant cell, as you can see, that's seen under the uh, light microscope. And this is the same cell, but now visualized under the electron microscope. What do you observe here? As you can see, it's very clear that when you compare those two pictures together, the picture seen or the image seen under the electron microscope, it has many missing details. And as you can see, it has like, uh, it does not have uh, much more text high texture and uh, a lot of uh, details, a lot of organelles are missing. However, here we have many organelles. Here you can see the mitochondria, which is this red one. Here you cannot see it. Here you can see those ribosomes, those black dots, you cannot see them. And also this is the Golgi, for example, and we will explain the role of the Golgi and all of the organelles in an upcoming lecture. So, a lot of details are missing here. And in addition to that, even though, for example, this is the chloroplast, even though it's missing here, it's shown here, sorry, in under the light microscope, but the details of this uh, chloroplast are missing. So we have a limitation in resolution. So it's the resolution. We have low resolution for the light microscope. Talking about resolution, what is resolution? Resolution by definition, it's the ability to distinguish between two objects very close together. The higher the resolution of an image, the greater the detail that can be seen. So resolution is directly related to the details. We have high resolution, we have high details. Look here, for example. Here we have those two objects. We have two objects that are very close to each other. If we have a very high resolution, we can distinguish those two objects as two separate objects. However, if we have a poor resolution, they cannot be separated and distinguished as two individual things. They are seen as one thing. Here we have a blurry, we have a fizzy picture. However, somehow we have better resolution, you can still distinguish them here as two objects, but they are not far away from each other. So, resolution is measured by the ability of distinguishing two objects that are very close as two separate objects. If you have a high resolution, then you can distinguish them as separate objects, as this slide indicates. Now, the light microscope, it has resolution limits. It cannot distinguish, it cannot separate between two closed objects inside the cell. Here we have, the light microscope cannot distinguish between two separate points at a distance less than 200 nanometer. So, every two points in a cell or outside the cell, every two microscopic objects, we are talking biology, so we are looking under uh, unseen structures. So every two points that have, that are separated from each other with a distance 200 nanometer, you can still see them under the light microscope as two separate objects. However, if the distance is closer, if those points are close to each other with a distance less than 200 nanometer, then you will see a blurry or a fizzy picture. So this is the major limitation for the light microscope. The light microscope has another limitation. Okay, Even you here you, you magnify the picture, you cannot improve the resolution. The light microscope has another 
limitation which is visible limitation. What does this mean? This means that the light microscope cannot observe organelles, organelles means structures inside the cell, that has uh, a size less than half of the wavelength of the visible light. The wavelength of the visible light is 200 nanometer. Half 200, 400, 400 nanometer. Half of it is 200. So every organelle inside the cell that has a size less than 200 nanometer, it cannot be seen under the light microscope. Look at this table. It's an example. The nucleus, it has a size 10,000 nanometer. Is it greater than 200, which is half of this 400? Yes. So it can be visualized by the light microscope. The Golgi body, its size is 100 nanometer. And when we talk about size, I mean the diameter. 100 nanometer is less than 200, so it cannot be seen by the light microscope. The ribosomes, 225 nanometer, it's way more, less than the uh, diameter than 200 nanometer, so they cannot be seen under the uh, light microscope. So the light microscope, it has two limits, resolution limits and visible limits. What's the solution for those limits? It's using the electron microscope. The electron microscope has a proved uh, resolution and it has a proved uh, visualization. Why? Because it uses electrons as a source of light instead of the light used by light microscope that's why it's called light microscope because it uses light this is the electron microscope it uses electrons those electrons they have a very small wavelength and they can be easily focused on the specimen however the specimen and the screen must be in vacuum what is the reason the reason is that vacuum is no air so if there there was air the air particles can distract the electrons. One more thing is that the specimen must be dehydrated. Dehydrated means without any water contamination. What's the reason for that? The reason is that at vacuum, water will boil. Okay, Water will boil. It will not wait for the 100 degrees Celsius at room temperature. Here we have vacuum, so water can boil easily. So we have to make sure when using an electron microscope that the specimen we are seeing is totally empty from any water particle. <clears throat> now, let's summarize everything in this lecture. We are comparing between light microscope and electron microscope. The source of radiation was light in the light microscope, and here it was the electrons. The wavelength of radiation, we know that the wavelength of light is 400 nanometers. However, the electrons, they have very short wavelength which is equal to 0.005 nanometer. The maximum resolution is 200 nanometers. This means that any two objects that are close to each other, less than 200 nanometers, they cannot be seen as two points. However, the resolution is way much better in the electron microscope you can still see objects that are far away from each other, even they are at a distance of 0.05 nanometers. Now, what, one more advantage of the electron micro, light microscope over the electron microscope is that in the light microscope, you can use living or non-living specimen. However, the specimen must be non-living since it must be dehydrated. This is lecture number one. In lecture number two, we will be learning how to measure the magnification power of the microscope.